Good morning. It's Thursday, October the 4th. It's 11 o'clock and this is pre-recorded because I'm with my husband and he's getting a procedure done today. All right. So today's Bible study and of course, as usual, that the purpose of this study is to encourage the people of God with the word of God. Amen. And today's Bible studies topic is your relationship with God, your relationship with God. And today I'm just going to be taking a look at a lot of different scriptures because I just want us to really get a feel of who we are and why we're here and what this is all about. Amen. Um, so you know, have your Bibles ready and your notebook and your pencil to take notes because we're going to be doing a lot of scriptures as usual. The Bible says that if you love me, this is God speaking. He says, if you love me, you will obey what I command and I will ask the father. Now that's Jesus Christ, the father, the son, the Holy ghost. We know that's three in one. That's the Trinity. And we know that we were created by God. In the beginning, right, we were created for God. And um, and we know that when Jesus Christ came to earth, he came as a child, birthed, and died on a cross to take our sins away so that we can be redeemed. That's why in some places you'll hear Jesus being referred to as a kinsman redeemer. Um. And so with that happening, the whole purpose of that was to create a relationship where we realize who we are and why we are here. So let's take a look at some scriptures and I'm going to start with John chapter one, verse four and 10. John chapter one, verse four, verse 10. It says, I'm sorry. Let me correct that. It's first John chapter four, verse 10. Again, first John chapter four, verse 10. He says, this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Amen. So that's where everything started is the love of God for us, his children, and in, and God sending Jesus Christ to earth for us, for atone for sins. And when you think of that and think about how we would not even sometimes, you know, for someone that we don't like, we wouldn't even give them a bad word. But God had all these children and all of, all of us, and he had to make a way for us to be redeemed. Amen. Um, Acts chapter 17, 26 and 28 says, from one man, he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he's not far from any one of us. For in him, we live and move and have or being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offsprings. So saints, get this in your spirit. God is in us and in him we live, we move, and have our being. Remember, he's not outside, he's inside. So that's why he feels all that we feel and he loves us. You are aware that whatever happens to you also happens to Jesus. You must believe that he lives in you because he lives in you. He can feel the pain that you are feeling and knows your tears. Nothing happens by happenstance. Everything that happens to us have a purpose. Amen. 
God is trying to mold us to look more like Christ. And Christ is the standard to which we should live. And if you look at the word, it gives us all the different things that we need to live up to. Amen. So let's take a look at 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us from his own glory and goodness. His divine power, that's where? On the inside. Amen. You guys got it. It's on the inside. So keep in mind that, you know, God's best is the only thing he wants to give us. Nothing else is good enough but God's best. And, you know, when we hear of people complaining and grumbling and they're grumbling and they're complaining and they're complaining, they're, oh, I have no shoes. I have no shoes and all of these different things, right? And then you'll find the man that's complaining that he has no shoes. He runs into the man who's got no feet. Now, when you run into the man that's got no feet, that's a whole different analogy, a whole different way to look at life. And you got to step back and say, whoa, I'm complaining I have no shoes, but this man has no feet. You now learn to be appreciative, amen, of what you have and be grateful to God. And keep in mind that God's best is what he wants for you. What can you do to know God's best? You know, you got to keep in mind a few things. That God is your father. God is your creator. God is the author and the finisher of your faith. God is your best friend. You know, he is your doctor. He is your lawyer. He is your sustainer. He is your protector. He is your provider. He is king of kings and lord of lords. Amen. He also lives inside of you. Let's take a look at Luke chapter 12 verse 7. It says, indeed, the very hairs of your head are numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. So all of this and up to the very number of how many hair we have on our head, God knows. Whoo, Jesus. Your relationship with God is, is quintessential to all Every molecule in your body, it, it should be the focus. Everything that centers around you, around you, everything in you. In Matthew 7, 11, it says, If then, though you are evil and you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Wow. So if we think about that as parents to our children, we only want to give good things to our children. And and we're not God with the unlimited access like God is. And we still want to give good things to our children. Much more God. Amen. So we need to recognize that and don't let anything else stop us. Amen. Your relationship with him can only grow when you spend time with him. We need to let God grow in us. And what you feed will grow and what you starve will die. I'll say that for you again. What you feed will grow and what you starve will die. If you starve gossip, if you starve tardiness, if you starve cursing, if you starve being rude, if you starve being impolite, then that will die a natural death. If you feed your faith by reading the word, if you feed yourself by by being kind, if you feed yourself with things to be gentle, if you do those things, then those things will grow. If you practice being a loving to other people, then that will grow and everything else will starve and die a natural death. 
We want to look more like Christ. We want to hear his voice and feel his presence and recognize that it's God. God knows what you are about to say before you say it. Amen. And Matthew 4, 19 tells us, and my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. So if he's supplying all your needs according to his unlimited access, all we have to do is to tap into him and grow our faith. That's our responsibility. Matthew 6, 31 and 33 says, So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Amen? That's what we need to seek after. Jeremiah 29, 11 tells us that for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Come on, saints. It's already planned out. Psalms 27, 4 says, one thing I ask from the Lord, this one. Only do I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze on his beauty of the Lord and to seek his temple. All we have to do is to keep our hands into his hands. First John 3, 1 and 3 says, see what great love the father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah, my brothers and my sisters. That gives me joy. It gives me hope. It gives me peace. It comforts me. It relaxes me. It does take all the stress away from me. I hope it did that for you as well. Because that is exactly what it is. We shall behold him as he is. We'll be getting a glorified body. And we will hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen. Amen. Our relationship with Christ. Our relationship with Christ. Let's grow that. Let's be strong in that. Let's keep our eyes on the prize and press forward towards the mark. Like Paul said, amen. Let's go to our prayer list. Basil, Lydia, Melissa, Ayana, Emmett, Chrissy, Star, Sharon, George, Romana, Galen, Wheat Family, Giovanni Owens, Shackleford Family, Corey, Valerie, Ligaya, Richard O'Neill, Owens Family, Georgette, Tanya Mercer, Nike Gilbert, Ronnie Mercer, Kim Loveless, Melissa, Grace Appleby, Nancy Bell, Diane Alley, Allen, Ron Jeffries, Gail Mullins, and June Dixon. We're going to pray. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you today, God, lifting our hands up and praising you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for our relationship with you. Thank you for everlasting peace and joy with you. Thank you for letting us know that eventually it's all going to be done and we will look like you. We'll behold you as you are. Thank you for the strength that you've given us to make it another day. We love you, God, and we praise you. We magnify your name. We lift up everyone that was mentioned on this list, God. Do what you do best, God, and to show up in their situation, their circumstance. Grant unto them, their God, everything that they need. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. We speak blessings, Lord God. We bind curses right now in the name of Jesus. We bind the demon and their demonic purposes and every act that they might have. We speak peace in this country. We speak joy in this country. 
country. We speak love in this country. We speak everything that according to your word, God, we speak it, Father God. We dispatch the angels to release this over this country, Lord God, and we bind anything the enemy tries to do. Oh, bless your name, Jehovah. We stand in the gap right now. We intercede. Let all the warriors, all the prayer warriors bind together, Lord God, and to cover this country with prayer. Oh, bless your name, God. Do what you do best now, Father God. Touch everyone as we, are, as I call it out there right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And we'll be so careful to give you the praise in Jesus' holy and matchless name. We pray with thanksgiving and we say amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, God. We worship you, Father, the true and living God. There is none like you. We thank you that we can come into your presence, feel you move, and hear you speak to us. There is no place we would rather be than safely in your arms. Oh, bless your name, God. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We praise you. See you next week, family, on Thursday at 11 o'clock. God bless and have a great rest of your week.